Keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Here's the verse of the day for Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. In that KingJamesBibleOnline.org, this is the second day that they ran this verse. And it's John 9.25. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. And it's John 9.25. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that where areas I was blind, now I see. And since they ran the same verse two days in a row, I typed in verse of the day. And when you go to verseoftheday.com, it's Romans 13.1. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And it's also the same verse at BibleGateway.com. Verse of the day, Romans 13.1. And you already know, Netanyahu's back. And the powers that be are ordained of God. And if you remember, I told you, and most of you probably know, that he has 14 days to form a government. He has until November 15th. And hopefully, we're caught up before he does. But if we're still here on the 15th, we'll see what happens. And real quick, most of you know this. His whole career, he was against. He was fighting against the two-state solution. And then Donald Trump took over the White House and released his peace to prosperity plan. Then all of a sudden, he got Netanyahu to compromise and agree to a two-state solution. Then they replaced Netanyahu with Bennett. Then they replaced Trump with Biden. And God allowed this. And the House voted and passed the bill to divide the land. Then Biden signed the bill. Then he flew to Israel. Then Herzog, the president of Israel, just flew to the White House on the solar eclipse 1025. They're all in on dividing the land, fam. And that's what's going down. And it's the last straw. Joel 3-2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Revelation 16:16, 16, 16, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Meanwhile, Jesus Christ went to prepare a place for us and he's coming back to get us, to take us to that place. And it will not be long now, family. And he said, there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. All right, so I'll take you to the sun first for today. And if you remember, 3134 in Bible Strong's Concordance is Maranatha. And you would think 3134 would be right between 3131 and 3135, but they're not showing it. So I went to check solar map, and it says click the link. The content has moved. And when it pops up and you scroll down, you can actually see Maranatha 3134. That sunspot is already past 3133 and 3131. And this will probably be the last day that it's visible. A week before 11-11. And real quick, you can see right here it says Moon Rocket Update. And it says today, Thursday, November 3rd at 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time to discuss the status of the Artemis Moon Rocket. And if you don't know what Artemis means in the Bible, look it up. And right under that, you can see this amazing picture of pink auroras with a little green and yellow. And it says, if you spend 10 years inside the Arctic Circle, you're going to see a lot of auroras. I've been guiding aurora tours full time for the past 10 years, says Marcus. And Marcus means harvest family. Look it up. And he said, and I thought I had seen it all. Think again. 
We headed out early last night, November 2nd, to chase the lights. And what a surprise, he says. There were the most intense pink auroras I have ever seen. The pink color was bright and obvious to the naked eye. The entire group was stunned. Well, imagine how stunned they'll be when they see the sign of the Son of Man appear and Jesus Christ come like lightning. Imagine how stunned they'll be when they see the dead in Christ rise first and us meet them in the air. To be with Yeshua forever. And he said, there'll be signs in the sun. And there is. Sunspot 3134 just went by and it means Maranatha. And again, last month on the 25th, on the solar eclipse, the president of Israel met with the president of the United States of America. There's signs in the sun, and it was just darkened, and the moon's about to turn completely blood red. On 11-8, the total blood moon eclipse. At 11 o'clock UTC time, and there's more signs in the moon. And I don't know if you know, but when you go to renewedmoon.com right now, it's saying that the new moon was reported unseen over Israel. And it was expected Wednesday evening, October 26th. That's the same day that we laid Christina's body to rest. And I was hoping to put that video out today to show you the whole service. I said in the last video that I was going to get that out in the next video, God willing. And the whole thing is recorded on our son's camera. I ordered an SD card to download it to his computer but it hasn't arrived yet i'm still waiting on the sd card it's supposed to be here today now back to the moon and when you go to when is the new moon.com it says in the second paragraph also for jerusalem only ciders the moon was not sighted by any of our ciders in jerusalem and I've been wanting to share this with you, but I've been handling so much. I haven't got a chance to put it in the last couple videos, but I am right now on October 27th at 9.36 a.m. Deborah's date tree emailed me. And when you scroll down, you can see right here it says from Jerusalem at 6.03 p.m. by Deborah Gordon, followed by Christian Prykop, David Joseph and Gil Asendorf. They all confirmed the new moon over Jerusalem at 6.03 p.m., family. Well, here's why that's so gigantinormous. And I'll start by saying, because Jesus Christ said the signs would be in the moon. And when you go to Strong's Greek for the time that the new moon was confirmed over Jerusalem at 6.03, the definition is, and I know you can all feel this strained expectancy, eager expectation. And when you scroll down, it's right here. 603 is used twice. Romans 819 and Philippians 120. Romans 819 applies this term directly to each believer receiving a unique glorified body at Christ's return. This intense expectation fosters earnest longing to see Jesus portrayed as an Olympic runner straining forward to the end goal with the head outstretched. This automatically also means turning away from what is lesser to lay hold of the greater. And you know Romans 8.19 and you know Philippians 1.20. They're the only two occurrences for 603, the time that the new moon was confirmed over Jerusalem by multiple people. And when you go to Strong's Hebrew 603, the definition is a crying, groaning. Now I'm going to share this with you, family. A brother left a comment and said, from the date that Christina passed away for 23 minutes in the hospital on September 29th, then God brought her back to life. If you add 40 days, it lands on Tuesday, November 8th, the full total blood moon eclipse. And remember, one of Christina's last dreams were that the calendar was circled December 19th. God told her that was her due date. In the dream, she was pregnant. December 19th, family. And if you go 40 days from the total blood moon eclipse, 
The result is Sunday, December 18th. Well, the 18th here is the 19th in Jerusalem, the day that was circled on the calendar. And December 18th is the first day of Hanukkah. And remember, in John chapter 6, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, said four times that he will raise us up on the last day. Well, the last day of Hanukkah this year is Christmas. And I shared this before, but let me remind you, Christina and I went to one of the biggest churches out here, Houses of Our Father, and right when we come in, they're doing an altar call at the beginning for healing. So Christina and I jumped up, went right down the aisle, straight to a brother. He laid hands on us. He prayed for Christina. He told us. He actually closed his eyes and leaned back up against the stage. And I said, hey, bro, are you all right? And he said, God just told me to tell you, you're going to have the best Christmas ever. And I'm not claiming any rapture date. I'm sharing with you what God, our Father, is showing us. And the signs, His signs, right where He said they would be. The signs of His coming to get us. And His signs are the strongest this month. The signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, they're all lining up, going into conjunction. And right here on Earth's sky, you could see tomorrow the moon is near Jupiter. And as you can see right here, this total lunar eclipse on November 8th, the election day, and the day that the total blood moon eclipse is near Uranus, it will be visible pretty much over the whole planet. And again, there will not be another total blood moon eclipse until the year 2025 on Purim. And on that date, in 2025, Purim, the sun will not be going into conjunction with Mercury at the same time as it enters the judgment scale, the altar, the house. But it will be here in five days. And I'll walk you through it again. And this could be the last time I walk you through it before we fly. And I just showed you. Tomorrow, Jupiter and the moon will be right by each other. Then as you go forward, you can see right there, the moon is underneath what they call the false god Ares, the god of war, they call it. And as you go through the hours, you can see the moon is approaching Uranus. And when you keep going through the hours, you can see right there on 11-8, the moon turns to blood. And then on 11-11, three days later, the moon is right next to the, what they call the red planet Mars. Super close. Now we'll go back to today's date and we'll go to the sun and I'll zoom in and I'll go through the days and I'll show you Mercury closing in on the sun, Venus going into the scale. And as you approach 11-8, the total blood moon eclipse, you can see Mercury about to go into conjunction with the sun as it enters into the scale at the same time. It's right there, right when the total blood moon eclipse happens. And guess what? Venus, what they call the bright morning star, what Jesus is called in the word, is right in the middle of the house, right in the middle of what they call Libra, the judgment scale. And three days later, on Cheshvan 17, Venus will be leaving the scale. And as Venus is leaving the scale, the asteroid Babylon will be entering the scale at the same time, family. If that doesn't mean judgment, I don't know what does. 
I'm not just trying to find something. I'm looking right where Jesus Christ said the signs would be and he's filling me with this Holy Spirit right now. I could feel the holy bumps raising up all over me. All glory to the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach forever. And there's so much more. I went over a lot of it, but I haven't gone over everything. It's gigantinormous. On that same date, on 11-8, on the total blood moon eclipse, when the conjunction with Mercury and the sun is happening, when Venus is in the middle of the scale, the comet Neowise is right there on the right. Comet Temple Tuttle is right in the middle of the scale with Venus. The asteroid Daniel is right below everything. And the comet 2017 K2 is right by the tail of what looks like a dragon to me because it has three heads. And you don't hear of scorpions having three heads. Put it together, family. Groombridge is there on November 8th. The asteroid Taiwan is right next to Venus on 11 8. And when you go to Pleiades, the asteroid Joella will be leaving Pleiades on 11-8. It's right there. And that's gigantinormous because it's 726 Joella. That's the number of this asteroid, 726, which means Harpazo, which means Rapture, which means caught up. And on 11-8, there's an asteroid named Nahima. I've showed you this. It's number 811. Asteroid 811 is Nahima, and it's also in the scale on 11-8 next to Venus. You can't make this up, family. It's bright as day. And on 11-11, Cheshvan 17th, the second month and the 17th day when the Great Flood started, when Babylon is entering the scale, so is the asteroid Athalia. Well, Athalia means the Lord is exalted. And when I opened our old family Bible today, before I started the video, it went straight to St. Mark chapter 12, verse 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. We're about to be like the angels, family, and so is Christina. Verse 26. And as touching the dead, that they rise... Have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob? Verse 27, he is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Yes, it's a hundred percent true. It's the bread of life. It's the word. It's God himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, and he's coming to get us. So keep your lamps burning brightly, family. Shine bright.